Welcome to Little Known Black History Facts. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Alilia Walker, Harlem Renaissance's Goddess of Joy. At the height of the Harlem Renaissance, Alilia Walker was Uptown's It Girl. She was widely known for her over-the-top parties at her townhouse. Langston Hughes anointed her the Joy Goddess of Harlem's 1920s. That glamorous life, however, was tinged with sadness. During her lifetime, she was overshadowed by her mother, Madam C.J. Walker, a woman who had rose from extreme poverty and was just one generation out of slavery. Born Lilia Walker, she changed her name to Alilia in 1922. She was the only child of Madam C.J. Walker, entrepreneur and hair care industry pioneer who is recognized as America's first self-made female millionaire. Walker grew up in St. Louis, Missouri and attended Knoxville College in Tennessee. As her mother's beauty and hair care line grew, Alilia worked with her mother in the business. Alilia took charge of the mail order part, working out of Pittsburgh. Madam Walker's hair care empire had grown tremendously and Alilia convinced her to expand into New York City. In 1913, Madam Walker purchased a townhouse on 108 West 136th Street in Harlem. Two years later, the Walkers acquired the adjacent townhouse at 110 West 136th Street. They hired noted architect Vertner Woodson Tandy to do a complete remodel, turning the two townhouses into one sprawling unit. Tandy was one of the first practicing African-American architects. He went on to design Madam C.J. Walker's Villa Lawaro. When her mother died in 1919, Olivia Walker inherited the business, becoming president in 1919. With her inheritance, Olivia purchased these two Vertner Tandy design townhouses and combined them into one residence with a new facade and furnished them lavishly. She also inherited the family estate, Villa Lawaro in Irvington, New York. The woman dubbed the Mahogany Millionaires hosted cultural soirees for the Harlem and Greenwich Village social elites, white and black, serving caviar and bootleg champagne and providing entertainment. Taking advantage of the success of the Walker Company in the early 1920s, Alilia entertained the rich, famous, and soon to be famous, including African and European royalty. Harlem Renaissance artists, civil rights leaders, white and black bankers, and businessmen. Her regular guests at the townhouse, which she named the Dark Tower, included Langston Hughes, Zora Neale Hurston, James Weldon Johnson, Gene Toomer, and many other writers associated with the Harlem Renaissance. The Dark Tower was once the Walker School of Hair. Alilia turned the building into a nightclub and hangout. At almost six feet tall, Alilia Walker's attire and signature turban became as legendary as her parties. She spared no expense. Alilia was known for her vibrant gatherings. She would usually issue several hundred invitations to each party. Unless you went there early, there was no possible way of getting in. One year after opening, in October 1928, the Dark Tower closed. Walker had begun charging for food and refreshments, which was a hard adjustment for many to make since they had been used to getting it all for free. She continued to rent the townhouse out for events, and she continued her arts patronage and philanthropic endeavor. While Madam C.J. Walker had been civic-minded, donating thousands of dollars to charity, Alilia used most of her inheritance to throw lavish parties. These soirees lasted for days, attended by hundreds of the royalty of the Harlem Renaissance. Actual royalty occasionally attended Alilia's party, as well as did many of the top entertainers and artists of the day, whether black or white. Alilia Walker was married three times and had an adopted daughter, Fairy May. She arranged the marriage of her daughter, May, to Dr. Gordon H. Jackson, who was the son of a prominent black Cincinnati family. In November 1923, her staff sent out 9,000 wedding invitations to friends and Walker Company agents in every state in the United States as well as around the world. She arranged a $42,000 wedding, the equivalent to $600,000 today. In 1929, the market crashed. Fewer parties were thrown during the Depression. By 1930, Walker Manufacturing Company revenues fell sharply with the coming Depression. 
Alilia was forced to sell much of the valuable art and antiques that had made Villa Luaro famous. As the decades waned, Walker continued to entertain lavishly, though years of excessive indulgence of both food and alcohol were taking their toll on her six-foot frame. On August 16, 1931, Alilia Walker died of a cerebral hemorrhage while attending a friend's birthday party. She was 46 years old. Alilia Walker's funeral was lavish and memorable. More than 11,000 people filed past her casket in the Harlem mortuary, and 1,000 turned out for the invitation-only funeral. In 1932, the estate itself went on the auction block. Until next time, if you like little-known history facts as I do, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell to be notified of future uploads. Thank you for watching.